guys all came, I want to welcome you to another episode of Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And I'm Nan, and this is Winnie. And Winnie can't be here because he's not allowed in the bookstore, because dogs aren't allowed here. But Nan is here. So we brought the pillow to remind us of Winnie. And today, we're going to read, Nan brought books all about friends. Do you have a friend? What's your friend's name? What's your friend's name? Josh, do you have a friend? Sophie. What's your friend's name? Sophie? Did, yeah? What's your friend's name? Papa. Papa can be your friend. That's right. Yeah, we can have all different kinds of friends. Papa can be your friend. My favorite book about friends. And the name of this book is Charlie the Caterpillar. There you go. What does a, who can tell me, what does a caterpillar grow into? A caterpillar turns into a, what does it turn into? A butterfly. A butterfly, that's right. Well, this is a story about a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly. And his name is Charlie. All right. One day, one bright and sunny day, Charlie the caterpillar was born. There he is. The world looked very, very big to Charlie because he was very, very small. He was just born. Charlie soon found out how delicious green things were. As he nibbled on a blade of grass, he could hear the wind whistling and the birds singing. He smiled and he was glad to be alive. Charlie decided to set out and see the world. So he looked to the left and he looked to the right and then he went straight ahead. Soon, Charlie, Charlie saw two monkeys. Hi, said Charlie, what are you doing? We're playing cards, they said. Oh, said Charlie, that sounds like fun. Can I play too? No, you can't, said the monkeys. Why not, asked Charlie, because you're just an ugly caterpillar. That wasn't very nice, was it? Look at them. So, Charlie, for the first time in his very young life, felt bad. He sighed, and he sh would have shrugged his shoulders, but he didn't have any. So he looked to the left, and he looked to the right, and then he went straight ahead. Pretty soon, he saw two rabbits hopping around. Hi, said Charlie. What are you doing? We're playing tennis, they said. Oh, said Charlie, that looks like fun. Can I play too? No, you can't, said the rabbits. Why not, asked Charlie, because you're just an ugly caterpillar. Now for the second time in his very young life, Charlie felt bad. He felt very sad. And he wondered, I don't feel ugly. I don't think I'm ugly. So he looked to the left and he looked to the right and then he went straight ahead. Just then, Charlie saw two mice playing miniature golf. These mice were so small, they had to play miniature golf. Miniature means small. Hi, said Charlie. What are you doing? We're playing golf, they answered. Oh, said Charlie. That looks like fun. Can I play too? What do you think they're going to say? Well, we'll see. No, you can't, said the mice. Why not, asked Charlie. Because you're just an ugly caterpillar, and we don't play with caterpillars. Charlie now, for the third time in his not-so-young life, felt bad. He felt very, very bad. So he looked to the left, and he looked to the right, and he went straight ahead. Yep. Charlie wanted to be alone because he felt bad, so he climbed up a tree, and he snuggled up in a small branch. There he is. He felt cold, so he went like this and like that and like this and like that, and before he knew it, he had spun himself a cocoon, and he was nice and warm inside. Charlie was very sad about all this ugly business. Why can't I have a friend, he wondered. Charlie was so tired from making his cocoon that he decided to take a nap. Let's see, it's summertime here, and he climbs in the tree. Then the leaves turned, and it became fall, then all the leaves fell off. All of a sudden, 
Snow began to fall and it covered everything with white. Winter had come. Charlie was nice and warm in his comfortable cocoon, but he dreamed that he had a best friend that he could laugh and play with. After a while, the grass began to grow and the flowers began to bloom. The birds began to have a party in the sky. Spring had come and somehow Charlie knew it was time to wake up. So he yawned and stretched and oh my goodness, what's he gonna be? What's he gonna be, what do you think? Pop! Charlie looked to the left and he looked to the right and oh my goodness, he had wings, beautiful butterfly wings. He had become a beautiful butterfly. So Charlie fluttered his wings and he and guess what? He flew up, 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 up. He laughed as he soared past the birds having a party in the sky. He flew so high that he came upon the monkeys playing cards. Oh, please come and play with us, begged the monkeys. Why, asked Charlie, because you're a beautiful butterfly. Ha, huh. no thanks, said Charlie. I gotta get out of here. He zoomed up and away. The monkeys jumped back and looked very sad. He did a couple of loop-de-loops and he came across the rabbits playing their tennis game. Oh, please, said the rabbits, won't you come and play with us? Why, asked Charlie. Because you're such a beautiful butterfly, they said. Not in your life. I gotta get out of here. And off he flew, leaving the rabbits looking very downhearted. That means sad. He circled around for a while, and then he saw the mice playing the miniature golf game. Oh, pretty, pretty, please, pleaded the mice. Do come and play with us. Why? asked Charlie. Because you're such a beautiful butterfly. Not today. I have better things to do. Then off he soared, leaving the mice looking pitiful. They wanted to be his friend now because he was a beautiful butterfly. If they want to be my friends now just because I'm a beautiful butterfly, they're not real friends, thought Charlie as he flooded in the spring sunshine. Then Charlie heard someone crying. It was Katie the caterpillar. Charlie came closer. Why are you crying, he asked. Because no one will play with me. No one wants to be my friend, said Katie, because I'm just a caterpillar. I'll play with you, said Charlie. Charlie said that with a wink and a smile, because he knew she was going to be a beautiful butterfly, too. You will, said Katie. Whoopee! Then Charlie took Katie and told her all about becoming a beautiful butterfly. From that day on, Charlie and Katie played cards, they played tennis, they played miniature golf, they laughed and had a wonderful time, just like in Charlie's dream. Katie was happy and Charlie was happy. He finally had found a friend, a best friend. And there they are nibbling on the grass. That looks pretty good. Does it taste good? Mmm. We don't eat grass. No, that's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. That's right. We eat food. That's good. That's a good idea. All right. Has anybody ever had a cold? Yeah, raise your hand if you had a cold. Have you ever had a cold? Me too. Yeah, sometimes we get the sniffles. Sometimes we have a cold. I love a cold. You don't. I'm glad. Good. Good. Me neither. All right. Well, this is a story about this guy, and his name is Amos McGee, and he works at a zoo. And one day, he wakes up with a cold and he can't go to work. And we're gonna see what happens with Amos McGee's sick day. Amos McGee was an early riser. That means he got up early. Every morning when the alarm clock went off, he swung his legs out of bed and swapped his pajamas for his uniform so he could go to work. He would wind his watch and set a pot of water to boil for his tea. He would put a spoonful of sugar in his oatmeal and in his teacup. 
His belly was full, and then he would head out the door to go to work. This is a bus stop. You can see that with the bus over there. Every day, Amos waited for the number five bus, and it went to the city zoo. The bus driver would call, right on time. Amos had a lot to do at the zoo, but he always made time to visit his friends. He would play chess with the elephant, who thought and thought before making a move. He would run races with the tortoise. Tortoise is a turtle, and he never lost. He would sit quietly with the penguin, who was very shy. He would give a handkerchief to the rhinoceros, who always had a runny nose. He has a big nose, doesn't he? He has a big nose. And sit at sunset and read stories to the owl, who was afraid of the dark. One day, Amos awoke with the sniffles and the sneezes and the chills. He swung his legs out of bed, but then he said, oh, I don't think I can go to work today. He doesn't feel good. Poor Amos. Meanwhile, at the zoo, the animals were waiting for him. The elephant arranged all the chess pieces. The tortoise was stretching her legs, getting ready for the race. The penguin was sitting patiently. The rhinoceros worried about his allergies. The owl perched atop the storybooks and scratched his head with concern. Where is Amos? Hi there. They waited and waited. And later that day, where do you think they're going? Where do you think they're going? Who are they going to visit? Who's homesick? Amos? I bet they're going to visit Amos. You think? Let's see where they go. Here they go. They're waiting for the bus. They're waiting for the bus. There they are at the bus stop. There they are on the bus. I bet they're headed for Amos. Let's see where they end up. Oh, I was right. Hooray, he says. My good friends are here. They all came to see him because he was homesick. The elephant prepared his game of chess, and Amos thought and thought before making a move. I'm so tired. I can't run races today, said Amos to the tortoise. Let's play hide and seek. The tortoise is peeking, isn't he? Look at he. Can you peek when you play hide and seek? <laughs> That's not fair. I peek. Amos yawned. I could use a nap. So the penguin sat quietly, keeping his feet warm. A chew, said Amos, and he woke up with a sneeze, and the rhinoceros gave him a tissue. I'm beginning to feel much better. Thank you, said Amos to his friends. He swung his legs out of bed. Let's have a cup of tea. So they all had a little tea party. Amos wound his alarm clock. It's getting late, he said. After all, we all have to go to the zoo in the morning. So Amos said good night to the elephant, to the tortoise, to the penguin, to the rhinoceros, and he said good night to the owl. And here they are, they're having a sleepover. How about that? They're having a little slumber party. It doesn't look comfortable. Look at it, I know. Who's taking up all the room? The elephant? They look cozy, though, don't they? Yeah, they look nice, comfy, cozy. So they help their friend. All right. The next book I brought is kind of a funny book. This is called The Interrupting Chicken. What does it mean to interrupt? If someone's talking and you interrupt, you know what that means? That means you start talking before they're done talking. So this is about a chicken who just can't wait to talk, and he keeps interrupting people. Is there one over there? Look at that. There's two of them. How about that? I picked a good one. All right, so this is the interrupting chicken. It was bedtime for the little red chicken. There he is. OK, my little chicken, said Papa. Are you ready to go to sleep? Yes, Papa, but you forgot something. What's that, asked Papa. A bedtime story. I like a bedtime story. Here they are. Hi. All right, said Papa. I'll read one of your favorites. And of course, you're not going to interrupt, right? Oh, no, 
I'll be good, said the chicken. Do you think he's going to interrupt? <laughs> we'll see. There they are. Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel were very hungry. He's reading the story now. Deep in the woods, they found a house made of candy. Nibble, nibble, nibble. They began to eat the house until the old woman who lived there came out and said, Oh, what lovely children. Why don't you come inside? They were just about to follow her when the chicken yells, Out jumped the little red chicken and she said, Don't go in. She's a witch. The end. What did he do? He, he interrupted and he said the end of the story. Chicken, said Papa, you interrupted the story. Try not to get so involved. Oh, I'm sorry, Papa, she said, but she really was a witch. Well, you're supposed to be relaxing so you can fall asleep. Let's try another story. I'll be good, she said. Little Red Riding Hood. Now he's going to try this story. <laughs> Take this basket of goodies to Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother. But don't stray from the path. The woods are full of danger. Red Riding Hood skipped along through the deep woods. Soon she met a wolf who wished her good morning. She was about to answer him when... What's the chicken going to do? The chicken is going to interrupt. Out jumped the little red chicken and she said, don't talk to strangers. So little red riding hood didn't the end. So he ruined the story again. He just can't help himself. Chicken, said Papa. You did it again. You interrupted two stories. And you're not even sleepy. I know, Papa, I'm sorry. But he was a mean old wolf. Yes, now get back into bed. Okay, Papa, let's try one more story, and I'll be good. You think he's going to be good this time? I don't think so. Chicken Little. This one's about a chicken. Chicken Little was hit on the head by an acorn. The sky is falling, she thought. She was about to run off and warn Goosey Lucy, Ducky Lucky, and Henny Penny, and everyone on the farm that the sky was falling when... Oh, here goes Chicken. Out jumped the little red chicken, and she said, don't panic. It was just an acorn. So the chicken didn't. The end. She did it again. My goodness. Chicken said, Papa, you did it again. Oh, Papa, I couldn't let that little chicken get all upset over an acorn. Please read one more story. I promise I'll fall asleep. But chicken said, Papa, we're all out of stories. Oh, no, I can't go to sleep without a story, Chicken said. Then, said Papa, yawning, why don't you tell me a story? Me tell a story, said the little red chicken. Okay, Papa, here we go. Um, think he's going to interrupt her? What do you think Papa's going to do? Think he's going to interrupt her? I don't know, we'll see. Bedtime for Papa by Chicken. Once there was a little red chicken who put her papa to bed. She read him a hundred stories. She gave him warm milk, but nothing worked. He stayed awake all... Zzz, what's he doing? He's snoring. What did papa do? He's, thank you. Yes, that's the way he snores. Zzz, he fell <coughs> fast asleep. And she's going, papa, papa. Look, look at him. His mouth is open, he's snoring. Good night, Papa, she said. The end. So she did put him to sleep, didn't she? Yeah, he fell asleep with his bedtime story. But she didn't, because she wouldn't stop interrupting. All right, let's see. Who likes Pete the Cat? I do. I, guess I do. You have that in your house? I love Pete the Cat stories. Yeah. Yeah, I love Pete the Cat. And yeah, yeah, me, too, me too. Me too. And Pete the Cat has a friend, doesn't he? What's his friend's name? Gus. Gus. This is a story about Pete the Cat and some missing cupcakes. Who thinks they can count backwards? Can anybody count backwards? I can count backwards. Good, good. Because we have to count backwards in this story because someone keeps eating the cupcakes. Have you ever eaten a cupcake? Yeah, 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 me too. I have. 
I love cupcakes. So this is a story about Pete and Gus and the missing cupcakes. Pete and Gus were as busy as could be. They were getting ready for the cupcake party. It started at three. And this also is a rhyming book. The, the ends of the sentences rhyme. There they are. They're cooking up a storm, aren't they? Look at them. They're making cupcakes. They were making cupcakes for everyone. Pete and Gus counted them just for fun. They had 10 when they were done. Let's count the cupcakes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There they are. Ten cupcakes. Oh no! Some of the cupcakes were gone. They were sure they had been ten. We counted them, right? There were ten. Pete said, maybe we need to count them again. Maybe those were ladybugs. Maybe the ladybugs ate them? Maybe. Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only eight. There's... I'm a ladybug. That's right. I kind of look like a ladybug. I didn't eat them. Did I eat them? No. No, I didn't eat them. They counted the cupcakes lined up straight. Now there were only eight. It looked like someone had taken two. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then they found a clue. There's crumbs on the ground. Look at the crumbs in the, the wrappers from the cupcakes. Gus said, yeah, Gus said, look what I have found, sprinkles on the ground. I bet it was Squirrel. Squirrel loves sprinkles. Squirrel said, it wasn't me, it couldn't be. I've been at a spelling bee. Oh no. More cupcakes are missing. Come and see. <gasps> you got to count again. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, my goodness. That was too weird. Two more cup cupcakes had disappeared. Now there were only six. Someone must be playing tricks. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then they found another clue. They found footprints, tracks. Pete said, I bet it was Alligator. He loves to eat. Alligator said, it wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been learning my ABCs. But oh, oh, more cupcakes are missing. Come and see. Now there were only four. Someone had taken two more. One, two, three, four. Only four. After all their work, Pete and Gus did not know what to do. But just then they found another clue. Someone put up a ladder so they could get the cupcakes. I bet it was Turtle, said Pete. I know Turtle loves sweets. Do you think Turtle could climb the ladder? I don't think so. Let's see. Turtle said, it wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been swimming out to sea. Uh-oh, more cupcakes are missing. What do we see in the, in the window? What do we see in the window? Can you see in the window? I see little eyes. Someone's in there taking the cupcakes. You see the little eyes in the window? See the eyes? Yeah. Yeah. More cupcakes were missing. What on earth was going on? All the cupcakes now are gone. There's nothing left to count. Zero. Zero, that's right. Pete and Gus did not know what to do. They started looking for another clue. They're going to follow the footprints. Let's see what happens. There's sprinkles and cupcake wraps. They found Grumpy Toad with icing on his face. Pete and Gus had solved the case. We knew it was frog. We saw those eyes, remember? I'm so sorry it was me. I could not stop with just one. I ate and ate till there were none. They must have been yummy cupcakes. Zero, that's right. Everyone agreed Grumpy Toad should have to miss the fun. He was, they weren't, weren't going to let him come to the party. He could not come after what he had done. Pete said, but wait, Grumpy Toad made a mistake. This is true. Let's give him a second chance. Who is singing it? Uh, Pete. Pete.
Pete is saying this. And he said, let's give him a second chance. That's what good friends do. Pete told Grumpy Toad that they would give him another chance. He was so excited, he did a happy dance. The night of the party was so much fun. Grumpy Toad brought more than enough cupcakes for everyone. What did Grumpy Toad make cupcakes for everybody? How was that? That was a good story. That was a great story. All right. It made you sleepy? Well, don't fall asleep, because I have one more story. What holiday's coming up? Does anybody? Yep, that's coming. Thanksgiving is coming before Christmas. I know, I have more books too if we have time, okay? But I want to read you this one because I brought you a game to play with this poem. This was a poem, and the woman who wrote this poem lived not far from here. She lived in a city called Medford, which is not too far from here. And her grandfather's house that she talks about in this poem is still there. So you could go on a field trip and find the house that El Maria Child used to go in her little horse-drawn carriage to visit her grandfather. The house is still there. So this is a poem, and if, if Nan could sing, I would sing it for you, but we won't do that. We won't subject you. We won't do that, okay? I won't do that for you. But this is a poem about Thanksgiving. And what do we do a lot of on Thanksgiving? What do we do a lot of? Eat? Well, she's all excited because she's going to her grandfather's house to eat a lot of Thanksgiving food. How do you know and go to my grandpa and grandma's house? I made a good guess, I guess. All right, so here we go. Over the river and through the wood to grandfather's house we go. The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh through the white and drifted snow. Look at the dog. Keep your eye on the dog. The dog is in every picture. Over the river and through the wood to grandfather's house away. We would not stop for doll atop for it's Thanksgiving day. And they are hungry. Over the river and through the wood, oh how the wind does blow. It stings the toes and bites the nose as over the go. The pictures are beautiful in this book. And keep your eye on the puppy, on the dog. Over the river and through the wood with a clear blue winter sky. The dogs do bark, the children hark as we go jingling by. Usually on the sleighs they used to have bells, so when the, the sleigh would go by, you would hear the sleigh go by, and the horse usually had bells on him too. Over the river and through the wood to have a first-rate play. Hear the bells ring, ting-a-ling-ding, hooray for Thanksgiving Day. Over the river and through the wood, no matter for winds that blow, for if we get the sleigh upset into a bank of snow, that wouldn't be good if they hit a snowbank. See the puppy? Over the river and through the wood to see little John and Anne, they may be cousins, we will kiss them all and play snowball and stay as long as we can. Over the river and through the wood, trot fast, my dapple gray. That's the name of the kind of horse it is. Spring over the ground like a hunting hound for it's Thanksgiving day. Over the river and through the wood and straight through the barnyard gate, we seem to go extremely slow. It's so hard to wait. She's excited to get there. Over the river and through the wood, old Joller hears our bells, that's this dog, with a loud bow wow, and thus the news he tells. He announces they're there because he barks when they arrive. You think he's gonna play with the other puppy who's coming? I bet they're excited to see each other too. Over the, this is Grandma, over the river and through the wood, when grandmother sees us come, she will say, oh dear, the children are here. Bring in a pie for everyone. Oh, that sounds good to me. Over the river and through the wood, now grandmother's cap I spy. Hooray for the fun, is the pudding done? Hooray for pumpkin pie. Who likes pumpkin pie? I do, I do, I like pumpkin pie. And here they are. They're all sitting down to have their Thanksgiving dinner. Who's this? 
at the two puppies. Yep, the puppies are there. And there they are. Yeah, so if you, it's right there, the house where this child used to go to see her grandmother and grandfather is right there in Medford, Mass. Yeah, yeah, and they used to go. So what I did is I made for you all, I made you a game that you can take home and play. And it's in the bag, and it is the game of Over the River and Through the Wood. And all you need is a dice, uh, one die, and you can count, and you can make your way to grandmother's house and grandfather's house. Uh, I get to bring dad home. You get to bring that home, that's right. Everybody gets to bring one home. I bring it to my home. You can bring it to your house, yes you can. Yes, yes. yes. But I just need my own. You're gonna have your own, yes you are. Yes, everybody's gonna have one to take home. So I just want to thank you all for coming to Storytime with Winnie and Nan. And if you want to watch yourself on TV, you can see, you can see the show on the RCTV Reading Channel once it's up there and you can watch yourself on TV. How's that? Is that good? All right. Well, thank you for coming and we thank Liz for letting us be here. Say thank you, Liz. Thank you, Nan. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> all right. Yeah.